the webinar and good afternoon. Really happy to have so many different agencies and higher education institutions represented on this call. This is a this is a topic that's really near and dear to my heart. I'm an exercise physiologist and I care a lot about physical fitness. But when we think about physical fitness, it's not always about, you know, what people think, like running a marathon or, you know, being in the best shape of our lives. And the message directory ever is going to deliver today is really about inspiring others, taking care of yourself so you can take care of others and what that means. Uh, I met Director Yebra a little over a year ago. I heard him speak in uh, at the Texas Correction Association conference, and he was very inspiring. And afterward, I went up and talked to him, and he said, you know, I'm running this new physical agility test. And he said, you have to come see this for yourself. Come to Huntsville, see what we're doing. So I went to Huntsville. And not only did I see it, I actually participated in the physical agility mm -hmm. test, which was amazing. And the, the feeling that I had there was just the support. It was inclusive. It was inspirational. And he's going to talk a little bit about what he's doing to inspire people there. But that was that, that come all in, you know, how, how can I help you? So that's why I asked him to speak today, because his message is inclusive and it's inspiring. So with that being said, a little bit of background about Mr. Yebra. He is a, a West Point graduate. He grew up playing soccer. He uh, graduated from West Point with a degree in civil engineering management. Went on to serve for the Army for 24 years, where he spent three years in combat tours in Iraq and came back with four bronze stars. Thank you for your service and thank you for being with us today. Everybody, y'all are in for a treat. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Director Yebra. Um, Lizzie, uh, thank you very much. And just before we get underway, um, what an honor to serve this wonderful country, but we have the best soldiers, sergeants, and our non-commissioned officers are the are the reason why we're the best uh, military in the world. But uh, so everything I was able to accomplish is because of the the sacrifice of the entire team. And so I really appreciate that very kind introduction. Um, the, what I hope to share with you today is is the integration of uh, fitness into leadership and how it's really the foundation for everything that you want to be able to do or you're capable of doing or being at your best in integrating those concepts. Uh, we talk about leadership as if, as if it were some end state <clears throat> that we do certain things and therefore we arrive to leadership. Uh, the approach I like to share with team members is just just in the same way that lawyers practice law, that doctors practice medicine, that leaders, all they can do is practice leadership. It's a continual learning process. Uh, we make mistakes. It's uncertain. It's, uh, it's dangerous at times, and uh, we have far from figured out where, where managers are dealing with certainty and predictability and processes and making sure step one, step two, step three, the leaders operate in a space that's uncertain, where there's a lack of clarity, where there's a loneliness, but it requires a certain strength, a certain resiliency, a fortitude, of which fitness is, is a component of. And so I'll, I'll dance in and out of, of, of leadership thoughts and then fitness thoughts, but you'll see, I hope, that we would connect on how integrated uh, they should be and how integrated they are. Uh, today, I'm going to ask you to just take a look and see yourself through a different lens. <clears throat> see yourself in a way that you haven't seen yourself before. To see and visualize the person that you want to become. Uh, it's our ability, just like, just like you see here when you're going through which which lens is best for you? I'll share a lot of different ideas, but it's going to be up to you to take a look and say, well, what's what puts it in focus for me? What aspect of what he shared puts this effort in focus for me? And that you see the world differently, that you can change your perspective on how you do your work. And so when you are approaching life you have just this lens and a perspective about how you do the jobs that you do and the leader that you want to become this is a difficult for me to, to say but this is a if you don't know what this is it's an electric harley davidson motorcycle words that never should be used in a single sentence i have a 2010 fat boy low and when i saw this it was just so unique that i'm looking at an electric Harley Davidson motorcycle. Somebody asked me, does it make the noise? I said, I don't think it does. I think it's actually a really quiet ride. But you ask yourself, say, why 
why do we have this motorcycle? Why did Harley Davidson produce this motorcycle? It's their ability to adapt to the current environment. And our abilities to, to say, well, how can I become the best person that I want to become in this environment? It's our ability to adapt, see things differently, and then act on them, of which the your level of fitness, your resiliency has a critical component involved there. A good army leader once told me, said, David, if you don't like change, you're really going to hate being irrelevant. And that put in perspective for me about the need to adapt to what's happening in the environment that you're in. And people always say, well, people, they, they fear change. You know, we're talking, about, we're talking today about changing your life. Can you change your life? The thought is that people don't fear change. If I offered you a brand new car, so just hand me your car keys, walk outside, and, and you have a brand new car, hey, yeah, you're out, you're all for change. If people don't fear change, it's the it's the fear of what they're going about to lose as a result of the change. And you have a lot to gain by taking on a, a different perspective on life, a, a, a fitness filled perspective on life. You know, the Army has a term they, they use as VUCA. It's kind of made its way into business, but the, but the VUCA stands for Volatile, Uncertain, Complex, Ambiguous, and we use it in terms of in, in the environment. We're in a VUCA environment, and it's really easy to lose ourselves. Some of you are teleworking. Some of you are in, in, in situations where you're facing very difficult things. You're wearing a lot of protective gear. I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty right now about what's happening in the world right now. And it's so easy to lose ourselves in all of this chaos. I show you all this instrumentation. There's a, a fascinating show called Airline Disasters. And I watch it, but I watch it kind of the human component. There was a, a particular episode where they're, they're the, the crew's there and, and alarms start going off on all their instruments. I think the landing gear won't go down. There's other, a bunch of things start alarming inside for the crew and they're calling the actual companies that made the aircraft they're trying to sort it all out and they're trying to find a place to land and and how are we going to you know how are we going to get on the ground safely and they're doing all these things and and in the sensation of all these different inputs that are coming your way and the energy of where to land and this plane believe it or not if you can guess as to what happened the plane eventually crashes and everybody on board is lost what the, brought the plane down wasn't any of the tech, the, the alarms that were going off. They ran out of fuel. In all the efforts to try to figure out what was going on, they ran out of fuel. And that's what, it, where fuel wasn't even a problem, that's what caused the air, aircraft to crash. The analogy I'm drawing here is you got so much input, text message, social media, email, phone call, difficult boss, difficult employees. I mean, you're dealing with all these things coming at you. What it's easy to lose sight of is that your body needs fuel. I'm not talking, you know, of course, eating right, but I'm talking about your body taking fuel, being taking care of your body. And don't lose sight of it. You, your body's it's not a leased vehicle. You the what you have is what you've got for the rest of your life. And taking good care of it. Don't let the chaos of everything you're dealing with keep you from seeing and taking care of yourself. Don't run out of fuel. This is your life that we're talking about. Don't lose sight of it. But it's easy with everything that's happening right now. I'm going to ask you to kind of, as you, as you warm up to this webinar, to reappraise what you're feeling right now. I'm, the, I'm one of those guys. I'm the two-hour early at the airline gate. I don't know if you are, but you're, I'm a two-hour early at the gate. When you drive at the airport, it's like Mario Kart trying to find you know, my arriving, departing, long-term parking, and then... And then there's a lot of tension at the, the security gate. People are really nervous. There's always the announcement of, if you left the iPad at security gate, whatever, come back and get it. Or if you left your two kids at the security gate, come back and get them. People do some of the craziest things at those security gates. And then you're walking to this gate and you're hungry. You need a cup of coffee, but you've got to get to that gate because there's still that tension and stress of, is it the right gate? Is it still there? And you work your way all the way to the end of the terminal and you get to your gate only to check that in the little marquee, it's still, they're loading at this time. It's still your gate. And all of a sudden, 
to go back to the Dunkin' Donuts, you're at a very, you're at a, a very comfortable walk. You're nice and relaxed. And the only thing that happened was you reappraised what was happening to you. And so I'm asking you to reappraise what you're experiencing right now, not only during this webinar, but what you're experiencing in life. Said so a lot of what you're feeling right now is just the tension of everything that's happening around you. And so I'm asking you to just reappraise, relax, you know, get to the gate, if you will, and temporarily suspend all these ideas and thoughts that are coming at you, work, and it'll be there when we're done. But it's just about you and your fitness and how you can be the best that you can be. I'm going to ask Lacey to help me with a poll here, and you'll be able to um, indicate what is it that really helps you be the best person that you could possibly be. And so you'll see the, the is it on here. I was just going to say if your response isn't on here, feel free to chat it to me. Um, and some people on the previous webinar said, I need two of these things, and that's okay, too. Yeah, please, anything that you'd like to indicate or, or you can type additional comments into the question section there. And uh, we'll get a feel for where you're at, but this is, what is it that, God, if, if you did this, you'd really be on fire. You know, you'd really be at your best. You'd really get a, a you know, you would just be at your, you know, your, just your real peak performance. And so just kind of just take a little bit of time there and just kind of pick what you think would be more is most uh, is best for you and feel free again to, to type in any notes like Lacey has said I'll leave that open about 10 more seconds we've got about 75 percent of, of our participants have, have voted already or okay. responded we got a couple responses over here in the chat but um, you know it's interesting I think on this note when we look at a lot of uh, and during the last one and a lot of your reporting getting enough rest and recovery and that might be the thing you need to be more physically active right um, I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'll share the results with you. With the various groups, Lacey and team that we've looked at, it's always that the rest component is always a significant period, a, a significant factor. They're getting enough rest and recovery. Uh, 23 next highest was being physically active, followed by being spiritually connected and um, eating well is there as well and then just being organized in your life but getting rest recovery of course the fitness component a good workout that cleansing feeling will help uh, being able to get that rest every uh, about every day i would walk into the gym at west point and there was these quotes that are branded everywhere to help kind of get you in the mindset and and this there was a variation to this jfk quote but how important physical fitness is for all these other factors in your life your ability to to be creative the one at west point i think said you know physical fitness is the basis for all other forms of excellence but you can kind of see you know that that thought of you know to to do all these other things the foundation starts uh with your ability to to be physically fit at west point um to begin our process of becoming a leader uh, fighting for my life here at West Point, but the, but when at our freshman year, as we began the journey of becoming a leader, we had to take boxing, swimming, gymnastics, and wrestling over the course of that year, so that we could begin a foundation for the excellence that we were going to try to achieve in becoming the best leader that we, we could possibly become. But it was those sports, the intensity as an integral. Uh, part of becoming the leader that we wanted to become and so that was just the establishing the foundation as uh, Lacey mentioned i thank her for that that you know even at 52 i still get out and play as much as i can you know this feeling of <clears throat> what age and we'll talk about age in a little while but but does age really um play a factor here you know, most of the time when people use age, they use it as a reason not to do something. But for me, you know, playing a sport and, and having fun was something I learned very early on. It taught me a lot about resiliency, the teamwork, the camaraderie, and, and what it means to be part of that team. And I still leverage, 
I still leverage the team component to get me out of bed, to get me to go run, to make me feel a certain way. And so this is just a thought. So what, what do you do? You know, what, what do you use to help you? I mean, life is a team sport. It's just too difficult to try to do all these things by, by ourselves. And so what do you do uh, to help you uh, become the best person that you can possibly be? There are ways, uh, this is a, an event that we did with the San Houston State University baseball team. It's November and that water is ice cold and uh, folks are afraid of the water, but it's, it's this idea that you could discipline your mind to overcome these challenges. It, but the, what's really cool is that if, if, you, if you apply it in the fitness arena, that the template you use to overcome these challenges, things that you don't feel that you're capable of doing, the formula works to other aspects of your life how you take on work, the, the energy that you bring to the table and overcoming your fears. What, what stops us, what, what do they call it? This analysis paralysis is we want to figure out the perfect plan before we, what's the great workout plan? And we're trying to find the right app and the workout plan in the gym. And this idea of just jump in the deep end and just do it. You know, don't overthink it. Just start moving your body. If you think about it, you could you could think yourself out of anything. It's a whole diving board. You're standing there, and then you could just think yourself out of jumping into the water. Uh, so the idea here is just don't overthink it, and don't make it a, don't make it any more complicated. Really start doing something, and realize the payoffs almost immediately when you start. This idea of age, other than showing you a cheesy photo of myself with Chuck Norris. I mean, what does, if, if, if people say, well, how old are you? The spirit of, of be, the spirit behind telling somebody how old you are or in your own mind is to keep you from doing something. I'm this old, therefore I can't do something. It's, it's used more of a limitation than it is an ability. It's like the older you get, well, I, I shouldn't do it because I'm this old. I don't know. I I've, I've found that, that my energy level, my ability to think, clearly action and do certain things is based on and to think of creative thoughts is to be childlike in spirit and be childlike and we say well that's a, it's different being childish it's being childlike in your thought and how you approach certain things i was sharing a story with a friend earlier about toy story the movie it started with somebody's idea but they turned that that childlike idea into a movie that we all love it's that same mindset for you to say, let me let me be childlike in my approach to fitness. It doesn't have to be this elaborate letters and, and numbers and X's. It's just doing something with your body, just being active and and not overcomplicating the process or the idea. First, just imagine it like you would as a kid. Imagine playing and what that's like. And don't use age as a reason not to do something, but use it as an inspiration or just forget about it. You know, forget how old you are. If you just didn't know how old you were, how would you approach life? That's kind of the spirit that I'm just trying to share with you in this regard. And uh, Chuck Norris, this was an event in, in, in Brian. He had a, a uh, he was out with, there with a bunch of kids uh, with a program that he runs. We're going to pose a question to you in the, uh, in the question section there about reaching back to the spirit of it is, is to reach back uh, to a time when you were at your best. You know, for me, I might say as an example, I go back to soccer when I was around 16 and, and learning to learning what success felt like and and becoming a champion, you know, a state champion um, might be a, a, a when you were at your best. It might be right now. You're just at this peak performance, you're feeling really good, the job is good, the work, you're, you're healthy, and it might be right now, uh, but it, it might be also when you uh, think back to just different times in your life when you were at your best, what, what was it? What, was it a team, work-related, you know, just when we were at best? And when you, have some, when you have some samples there, Lacey, please feel free to comment on some of the answers that people are providing. Sure, we're starting to get some responses in here. Um, high school and college, 
are uh, two answers that we've received. Uh, someone said, when the sun's out, when I'm active and laughing. During college, when I was working out every day. Someone said, today is what matters most. I'm focusing on today. Now, when I'm practicing good self-care. When I took the time to practice yoga four to five times a week, I'm only doing it twice a week and I can feel the difference. Mm. During college and being active, during my military service, during college and when I'm being very active. <clears throat> yeah, thank y'all for responding. You can keep wow. those in. Um, training for a marathon within the last six years while well, I was a part of a bowling team. After, uh, sorry, these are coming in really quick now. <laughs> They're coming fast. Um, in my 50 to 55 year age, I worked out every day. It made a bad day, uh, it made my day great and never had any bad days. During high school, when I won the physical fitness award in college weightlifting, aerobics, and Zumba in 2012, so lots of phases of your life. In my 20s, when I had time to day surf, in the day to surf, um, yeah. and meditate before bed and wake up at the same time every day. And then uh, 10 years ago when I took up golfing. So these are great, yeah. you guys, keep them coming in. Um, and this is really about you exploring those conditions that, that helped you when you were at that phase um, at your best. Just awesome responses, Lacey. I, guess I should turn the uh, webinar over to those folks with all those incredible comments. Um, it's about being your personal best. If you think about some of those things, like being outdoors and the sun and the activity, the youth, or what, what, what was it about college environment that you were able to work out every day? Why the yoga? Why, why has the yoga gone from four or five days to just two? You know, um, creating that bowling or golf opportunity, taking care of yourself. Why has that maybe slipped? The idea here is this is about you and your personal best. And I'm going to turn the camera on just because I get a little passionate about this moment here. But just imagine the feelings that you had then and then recreate them. Recreate the settings, account for why you were at your best during those moments. Why was it that you were be able to do yoga four or five times a day and now not so much? Or their military service, what were the conditions around your military service that enabled you to be that? and have that level of fitness. This idea of never having a bad day. You know, when you step into this leadership arena, depending on where you're at in your life, you're no longer authorized a bad day. Never have a bad day. Um, I take myself back to those that we lost in combat and say what they wouldn't do to have my bad day. When I can't get out of bed to go work out, and I think about those who have, for in various forms of life, have lost their legs or a body part, what they wouldn't do to run if they had the opportunity, they would be jumping for joy. But look at those conditions and imagine and create those conditions that enabled you to be at your best during that moment in time and recreate it. A great, a great friend of mine shared this thought with me, but we can't create what we can't imagine. And it's that childlike spirit that you say, well, I'm gonna imagine it like a little kid and, and then have it become a reality. But create those conditions for me the military was, I would say it was easy to work out because I had to, and everybody was waiting for me to show up. And it was, you know, there was plenty of incentive to get up out of bed and go to, and go to work in the military. And uh, now it's soccer for me when I'm, I'm at 52, I still enjoy playing. So I've got to be able to keep up with those who are 10, 15 years younger than I am. Uh, so I leverage a team uh, component, but the fun of golf, the fun of bowling, and what it can do for you, just recreate those conditions and imagine it. If you know, we can't create what we can't imagine. If you can't imagine what it's like at your best, how do you expect to be at your best? And so that's why I wanted to just jog some thoughts and some memories about uh, being at your best. You know, you're, you're, when you're in this work environment, so I'm gonna try to just crosswalk here these, these where, why does, 
why are we talking about this in this setting? What, what does fitness have to do with my day-to-day -day work? And some of you, I can tell by your, some of your answers, you've lived this and you, and you know it. So I'm just, maybe it's kind of a, a rethinking it a little bit. But in your meetings, when, you, when everybody, there's this cloud of negativity about the situations that we're in and how we see it and, and, and maybe some doom and gloom and the story is very dark, that you can add a, a certain energy to that table, a positive attitude you know, you're, you can only process so much negative and positive, it's zero sum, but your level of fitness and how you feel in these meetings transitions that spirit into a more positive feeling and you can affect individuals' lives. I was in on a, a, a go-to meeting call and I had had a good workout in the morning and I, I, it was like the Brady Bunch, you know, you see everybody on the screen and I picked somebody out who uh, just really has been consistent with their work and I, and I told her, in this setting, I said, I thank you for, you know, everything that you do. And I went on and told a little bit about her. Uh, later on that day, she sent me a text. And I didn't know all this, but she said, you know, I needed that. I'm in a tough period of my life right now. And you just don't know how much I really needed that. What was really cool was if I hadn't had that clarity of thought and mind and a good workout, I might have missed it. I didn't see anything, but I might have missed the opportunity to comment to her and make her feel good on that day. In some cases, we have an opportunity to influence others. If you have the job where it's about directly influencing lives, whether it's in, in a teaching capacity, instructor, a pro probation officer, parole officer, correctional officer, whatever job that you have, you're in the business of influencing other people. You've been there, you know who influences you the most, but you're looking to see if they're well. Are they well? And if they're not, it takes away from their effectiveness to influence other people. You know, it's not as it's not as effective as it could be if you're not at your best. And so you're looking to say, am I at my best and how I can influence other people? And they'll see and feel your you, you've been there. You see the folks that you're with and you can feel how they feel. Fitness just being one component. There's a spiritual, mental, there's a full capacity there, but fitness being one of the components. The other is your ability to see the environment, uh, a, a slightly different perspective. I'll, I'll share a little bit more about Marcus Attrell just in a, a little bit, but we were together at West Point and we were up, oh, we're actually overlooking the Hudson River and we're talking about what it meant to serve this wonderful country. And we were able to see things from another perspective. You're, when you're feeling good and, and you're, you're, you're healthy and you've done some activity, you increase your ability to see things others that others can't see. You know, where, where the day-to-day -day grind of getting it done, step one, step two, step three, yes. But there's another component of dealing with the uncertainty, seeing what other people are feeling, that a level of fitness helps you to see and have a slightly different perspective from everybody else that may not be uh, taking care of themselves in that way. You know, I, I looked at this picture quite a bit, and, and what caught my attention here was Nolan Ryan's, the way he's listening to me. And if you think about how much energy it takes to listen, and, and but fitness being able to give you the strength and the ability to clear your mind and think and listen. If you think about the people that influence you the most, they're also the same ones that listen to you the best. And you're able to really connect with somebody and pay attention like i'm an audiobook junkie i listen to a lot of different books and they, they have the, the you know they have that little go back 30 seconds because they know you're not going to be able to pay attention but the discipline and how much energy it takes to listen to somebody when was the last time you were really listened to and how did it make you feel when somebody really listened to you and how much energy it takes just like what we're dealing with now, I'm, I'm running a command center here for testing across the state. It's it's chaos filled and crisis and it's hurry up, get this done. How are we doing numbers? And it's it's really intense type work. And and mistakes happen in really tension filled events. But your level of fitness and your ability to deal with the stress associated with it is mitigated by your level of health and how healthy you are and how fit you are. If you are more physically fit, you can handle stress a little bit better. 
and and we've all been to those situations where in these very stressful conditions we've you know maybe maybe not but you might have had that boss under normal circumstances they were great but as soon as the tension built and the stress they said something that washed away years of credibility fitness helps you helps you kind of deal with that stress and kind of channel your energy and focus on with a problem at hand not the sky is falling and fitness helps you remain focused and deal with stress that's associated with crisis filled situations it has a, it has an added effect too that you might this ability to overcome fear you might be in jobs that are just really you know every day is kind of a grind and you're just not sure you know there's so much uncertainty nowadays and you want to be able to overcome particular obstacles that you had a fitness component the payoffs are immediate like do this tomorrow get up move your body it doesn't have to have letters or x's or numbers just move and do something i guarantee you that your day tomorrow will be better you'll be able to deal with with things that's what's really cool about the fitness component is how you get yourself going in the morning the same energy and the template that you use to overcome the fear the obstacle the pain associated working out is also going to work for you in all other aspects of your life the problems the things that you're dealing with the challenges that you're facing won't be as significant you'll be able to have an added energy and focus and clarity and actually save time you might have read the article before so well if i don't have time and so we come in and we sit in the office and we just we just drag on the day where if we take a little bit of time 15 minutes 30 minutes to get a little bit of a workout in you're actually going to be that much more effective during the day but do something tomorrow and overcome that fear the other might be you might have a, a position where you're you got to influence people you got to speak to large groups and that added confidence you, you if you are you know in, in good shape your your posture will be good the way you stand the way you present yourself to in the meeting in the large group wherever you're at i mean there's there's a chemical reaction that occurs in your body if you get a chance watch uh, dr cuddy's ted talk on body language where how you position yourself it will increase that confidence it'll add the clarity and and the fitness being a component of how you be able to the, the way you carry yourself the way you position your body has an effect on your ability to think, be confident, and act. And in some cases, we find ourselves in situations where we have to defend either ourselves, others, or in some cases, escape from a building because of a fire or an emergency. That in that moment in time, will you be able to help yourself and will you be able to help other people? And so your level of fitness has a component there as well. You'll be able to anticipate for hopefully it's it's, it's late at night, you know, it's one of these situations where it's late at night, you know, the car's there, you're tired, looking at your phone, and you might miss the threat that's in front of you. And being a level of fitness, you know, you're a little bit more clarity, you'll be able to think and see, and in some cases anticipate situations that can cause harm and where you can be safe and take good care of yourself and others. There's an element here, I'm gonna come back to the camera, it's another one of those points I feel really strongly about. We're in a phase of, of, of our lives where there's not a whole lot we can control. <laughs> we seem to be more than ever right now in such uncertainty where, you know, I'm in this command center. I'm just, I don't know what's outside this door right now. I don't know what I'm about to walk back into. I'm not sure what's happening. I do know the one thing that I do control is my ability to react to it, my level of fitness and my, that's what I control. I don't know when my life will end. I don't know what's going to happen to me tonight, tomorrow, but I do know that, that I can take care of my level of fitness. That's one thing I can get a hold of and be better at. I control that. And this is an opportunity for you. Do something tomorrow. Promise me, just do something tomorrow. 
to be able to move your body and, and achieve that level of fitness that you desire, not what, but what you desire for your life. And you take a look at it and you say, let me take charge of what I control. I control this part. Everything else I can't control, but I can control this part and do something about it. Now, this week, I'm going to talk a little bit about maybe if, if you're in a position for maybe developing a program uh, for your organization. Uh, when I came on board here to the agency, we needed a, a sort of a revitalization of our fitness and what we were and what we were working on to be a, to to develop better employees and how we might be able to uh, enhance the morale and the camaraderie and encourage fitness in the organization. So we developed a physical agility assessment. And I'll share with you here in a little bit uh, what we what we were able to develop and 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 surprisingly effects that we could have never anticipated happening. We literally went out <clears throat> like kids and we played outside and we tried different things that, that aligned with what we needed correctional officers in this case to be capable of doing. But we made it broad enough so all employees could complete it. <clears throat> if you want more information about this, we'll have a chance and my contact information is in the handout. But we developed a physical agility assessment. This blows everybody's mind. <clears throat> no minimum time standard, just complete it. We just said, go out there and do your best. Do the best that you can do. And what we see out there is people doing their best. You know, if you set the minimum standard, they're going to gauge to the minimum standard. It's like a, on motorcycle riding. They said, if you want to hit something, look at it. And we, we liberated the, 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 the field to say, just do your best and have fun. And we played music and we are encouraging them. And that's the environment that we set for this physical agility assessment. And it's definitely not any science. We did three different stations. They run forward, run backwards. There's, there's some um, squat type activity. There's some core body strength activity at the 50 yard line, if you will. And there's some defensive tactic activity at the 75 yard, but they're moving back and forth and, and the environment is cheering people on to get the, to accomplish the, the task. And so um, I just wanted to share that uh, with you as well and where we're at. I have become complacent. I have become extremely out of shape. I'm heavier than I've ever been. I let myself go. I did this to myself. I tell you this story after spending the last week at in-service. Poor fat ass me who has 25 years of experience doesn't need to be told how to handle my business. Major Dodd started talking about how would bosses that were out of shape actually save a comrade if they were being assaulted across the form. We search areas, do we not? Yes, I'm responsible for these kids coming in. I'm responsible for their lives. Responsible for the people on the outside that's still waiting for us to keep them safe. They're not 40. Because we are a family, and we are responsible for each other. We really, really are. I started to think instead of TDCJ trying to get rid of us old, out of shape officers, maybe they were urging us to start giving more of a damn the way we once did. And that's you. That's going to be a reflection of what you as correctional professionals can do. I hereby declare that by June 8th of 2020, I will lose at least 50 pounds. Let's go, let's go! Come on! I am responsible for my comrades at work and my family at home. Finish! Just own it. Own it. But use today as a step-off point. I had to do it for myself and my family. Uh, we did that uh, physical agility assessment, and that uh, that the uh, young lady there, she was actually reading a face Facebook post. That's why I was a little animated there, but she was actually reading her Facebook post. And I went back and checked on her a few months later, and she had already lost not 15 pounds, but 14 pounds. And if 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 you're interested in in kind of be developing a, a some kind of a program like that, please uh, please let us know. This is a, a very uh, brief screenshot of a much longer text, 
but we did this with another group and uh, just the aspect of the fitness they were cheering uh another one of the participants cheering them on and, and the feedback there was just wonderful and said one of them even said that it was as good as any revival she'd ever been to and it wasn't so much about the minimum standard and we're testing it was the spirit and the camaraderie that comes with doing something difficult and um, and and that's the way the fitness part works the camaraderie of doing something together Lacey had the opportunity to come out like she mentioned in the introduction uh to participate Lacey, do you have a, just a reaction that you can share with the group about coming out and participating in that physical agility absolutely this was uh, very inspiring to me to be a part of the training to get to come out and um and and just participate in it the energy is hard to describe um there was rocky soundtrack music which is my favorite movie so that probably helped my um <laughs> experience a little bit but what i really loved was even the people that were struggling so much had just uh everybody wrapped around them in the show of solidarity and support and they were really everybody was trying to lift each other up it was never about kind of tearing down or shaming it was all positive and let's build and let's move forward from here and i i was very very impressed with uh what you've built there and i think you're onto something big thank you so much lacy i really appreciate that i want to share just a, a few thoughts i'm going to get to some concrete tips that uh, that may might be able to help you i have a wonderful friend um uh, marcus a trial lone survivor navy seal as an old army guy, I'm not a, not a big fan of the Navy, but some of these guys are okay. And and he shared a wonderful perspective with me one morning and uh, just of his life story, but he inspires me to be the best that I can possibly be. And I remember I was out, this is a picture of a ranch in Medina and I was out for a morning run and I'm gonna share some photos with you just because, you know, that, that idea of getting out in the morning or, or late at night and seeing certain things that, that we just don't see, we're just too busy with, with the phone and the and the calls and the work and the social media. But I was out one morning, I was about to, the sun was coming up, it was clearing the fog. Uh, and I was about to run up this hill and I was you know, probably one of the few that listens to country music when they're running. I was listening to, at this point, it's Tim McGraw's Live Like You Are Dying. And it, it, this happened at one moment, the song comes on, sun's coming up, it's clearing the fog and I get a text message from Marcus saying, hey, miss you brother, love you. And that, that's all it was. And the combination of all those things happened at one time, just, I just had a great day after that. And the reason I share that with you is that's, that's an opportunity that if I had not been out doing something, the synchronization of all those effects would have not have occurred. And, and at least one day in my life, it was a great day, just like so many others. This is another where I'm out running around West Point and being able to take in the fresh air and see in the clarity of thought when you just get out and see things that you just don't usually see. I was out in Boston one late one afternoon, and this is the Charles River along Boston. And uh, what a great, uh, you know, cleared my air. I was in a conference, I was just getting tired, and I just ran out and gave me a great uh, perspective on what was happening to me at that very moment. Uh, Lacey, I thought I took this out. This is also along the Charles River. I promise I was running and that I didn't stop at all. As I no was judgment along the here, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, that's the opposite. So if you look to the right, you see the sunset in the water. If you look to the left, uh, there were people not working out. And I promise I didn't stop. I should say, I promise I didn't stay long. Um, I want to take a second here just to talk about you personally. And, and for you to think a little bit here about your life. The picture, I wanna tell you about the picture, but I'll tell you how I, I connect it back to you personally. If you can imagine, this is a convoy of four heavily armored, heavily equipped Humvees in Iraq. I mean, we got the latest satellite, lasers, armor, systems you name it on these platforms and we're this is a little canal along along iraq it's an area uh, just north of uh, najaf the southern bag uh, southern iraq and we're along this convoy or we're moving along this canal and this we come upon a donkey on its side and the cart on its side 
And my guys asked me, sir, what do you want me to do? I said, well, get out and help, but we're not going anywhere. And how all these millions and millions of dollars in technology are negated by a donkey. That for you personally, there's, there's, there's only so much technology. There's not gonna be an, an app, a, a website, um, a, a TED talk or something that's gonna get you out of bed that morning or get you out the door at night or at lunch, wherever it is. That's gonna be you, it's just the good old fashioned, get some, get up and go. No amount of technology is gonna help you here. It might help a little bit. I'll talk about apps in a second, but it's about your will, your grit, and that it's difficult to do. But do something tomorrow morning. Promise me, you'll just do something tomorrow morning. I guarantee you, you're going to have a better day. Whatever challenge you're facing is not going to be as significant. Just get out and do it. Really, just get out and do it. And you'll be surprised at the immediate reaction and feelings that you'll have. This is a little, it might seem a little darker, but if you have a little tape measure, I recommend you do this. I, I've I was at a, a great mentor of mine was facilitating a leadership session and she pulled out, gave everybody these strips of tape, just printed on paper. And you had to, to tear off the day that you're at, your, your life was going to end. I'm like, man, this is dark. I was supposed to be uplifting. And so you had to literally just tear off the piece of paper where you were going to, where your life was going to come to an end. And then, and then you had to kind of tear off where your age was. And then when you look at it, it's like, there's not a whole lot left. When you can incrementally see the years, you're thinking to yourself, well, how am I gonna live my life? How am I gonna live out the rest of this time? And I really, like, write it down. I mean, you don't have to type it in the questions, but write it down. What year are you, is your life gonna end? And then write down your age and see how much time you have left. I do recommend try that tape measure. I did it with actual tape measure, and it's just like, uh oh, I, bet, I think I went and ran right after that. Oh, so use that tape measure and pick your age. Pick the age where it's going to come to an end and then see if that inspires you to get doing something today. One's that have been very helpful is what's your purpose? You know, what's that core? I think it's Mark Twain says, hey, the two most important days in your life is the day you were born. The chaplains will say the day that you died because they have an express elevator. But the day you were born and the day you figure out why. And what's your purpose? If your purpose is to, to increase your fitness levels, just to live a full life. You might be saving for retirement, but you can't even enjoy it. You can't get out and enjoy your full life. I'm gonna play as long as my body will allow me to play. That's where teammates, I do it for my teammates. I don't have that much discipline. I do it because I know I've got to hold up my end of the bargain when the game occurs or some special event, it might be a wedding, a vacation, something, but leverage it. People say, well, if I just train for that event, I'm not gonna be, it's not gonna fulfill the expectation. Once you get on this front edge of, of being fit, you're never gonna wanna go back. There's mornings when I know I, don't, I didn't work out, and I don't work out every day, but I try to get something done every day. But on days when I'm not, I, when I don't, I'm just not at my best. And it scares me because I don't want to go back to that feeling. And if you if 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 it's just not part of your lifestyle right now, you feel normal. But once you feel and get on the front edge of this, you never want to go back to where you are right now. But you got to envision yourself, just like we said a little earlier. We can't create what we can't imagine. Imagine the person you want to be and then begin to create that individual. But find your purpose behind why you want to work out, why you want to improve your fitness. These are some nuts and bolts. I even used some of them this morning. I sleep in my workout clothes. I get out of bed, I put my, they're right there, my running shoes and my socks, the coffee pot, I can brew it. I have a, a cup of coffee before I step out or whatever it is that gets you going, spark or just water or whatever. I never was a big believer in apps, but we had a state incentive that if you worked out so many minutes a week, and I found myself looking to say, well, let me just go ahead and get 20 minutes because that's all I need to accomplish this week or whatever it was. I found myself looking at the app and um, I had a buddy in Iraq. He would 
every day we try to get in five miles because we with everything that we we're dealing with and he even gave me a list of names to call him if he ever tried to get out of the run uh find something that gives you encouragement those who inter who mentioned about golf or bowling or yoga you know pat yourself on the back because no one's going to pat you on the back just yourself but you can find some teammates that give you a little bit of encouragement to help you be the best person that you can be and then you know audiobooks that's the only time i get to listen to certain books or certain music the music invokes a lot of emotion so find that song and play it the minute you get out of bed and or you're just not feeling quite right trick your mind by using those platforms and then nothing better than just tracking your progress pictures tape measure sending pictures you know of, of tracking your progress um, all those things that and apps that help you do that and even compete with other people you know we're so busy if you go back to the airline example i share with you we get so busy that we uh that all this activity of being fit spiritually mentally physically it's being engineered out of our lives because there's so much input we're dealing with so much on a given day that is being engineered out of our working lives and before we just get into some questions i just want to thank you for your service uh, I took a look at all the participants today and and said, what, you know, what incredible servants, you know, so I thank you for your service. And I'll, I'll finish with a quote, Lacey, so we can have some comments and questions. One is, you know, this quote has been with my in my life, and then there's a country music variation that I'll share with you as well. But the quote is, far better it is to dare mighty things to win glorious triumphs even though checkered by failure than it is to take rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy much nor suffer much for they live in the great twilight that knows not victory nor defeat i think a country music song captures it better if you get the choice to sit it out or dance i hope you dance i love I that hope that you dance i hope that you dance don't live in that great twilight that knows not victory nor defeat and uh lacy i thank you and i thank everybody for their really valuable time and please i know we have a few minutes for some questions lacy if you wouldn't mind please we did have a couple of great questions i think on the last webinar that folks might be interested can you tell people what your current workout regime is that's pretty simple lacy I'm, I'm in a soccer mode right now so i i run in the morning just a little over two miles but it's up and down hills backwards laterally and then i play soccer usually saturday nights or saturday morning sunday nights and once or twice a week and then run i run in between those days with a little bit of recovery uh, but a lot of dynamic running side to side backwards kind of crazy my neighbors think i'm nuts <laughs> functional for what you do though that's right <laughs> I did notice that the executive director of ERS is on the call today as well, and he is an avid fitness buff as well. He, uh, he He's a runner. Um, so I thought we could ask Porter just to say a few words, if you don't mind. Porter, would you mind saying hello to everybody? Well, I can you hear me, Lacey? I can. I can't thank you and David enough for doing this today. Um, when I saw this um, opportunity in our uh, wellness newsletter, and I'd had the privilege of meeting David, back early this year on my trip out to Huntsville, I was like, I, I got to circle this on my calendar. It's an example of just how many great people we have that work for the state. I mean, we've got tremendous people that work for the state, folks like David and, and Lacey um, and the resources that we have. I, I can't thank you enough for, for doing this. Uh, I really like this idea that you, you hit on and it's something I talk about when I, when I, when I go out and talk to, to our um, members wellness is about being able to live in retirement we obviously run uh, a pension plan that's what we do um, and a health care plan as well but uh, we, we the health care plan really should be uh, hopefully there to, to to allow people to live vibrantly in their retirement because they've worked they've worked hard and done important work so thanks for what y'all are doing i can't uh, appreciate you enough uh, and um, thanks to everyone on the call for what you do for the state uh, and for your service Thank you so much, Porter. I appreciate your, your feedback and, and your perspective. I know you have 
a very stressful job overseeing the state pension and, and all that we do. So uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that physical fitness keeps you level-headed so you can handle the stressors that you encounter every day. Um, we had a question from somebody asking, how do you get started if you aren't currently exercising? Do you have any ideas for, for folks that are just looking to get started on the exercise plan? Yeah, first of all, uh, just do something. Uh, don't overthink it. Start walking, uh, rowing, do something. If you have some piece of equipment that you at, at home you've never used, just start doing something. And nothing better than telling a friend you're going to do something and then having to follow up because they'll hold you accountable. So tell somebody else that you're doing something and really just start with anything. Don't wait. People want to line up the gym membership, the clothes, all that. That will come in time. Just do something tomorrow and then do something the day after and then the day after that and have have a means of accountability either your own accountability or tell somebody you're doing it and set a goal and chart your progress. Just don't overthink it. Start doing something tomorrow. Great, thank you. We have another question asking about how to build a workplace culture. Um, any suggestions on building a culture of wellness and what to do since people are sort of working um, separate, you know, from home, how do you, do you have any ideas on that? Yeah, there's an interesting uh, culture, like the, just the word itself, you know, like it's some end state, but culture is to, to care for. So if you look at the word culture itself, it, it originated from the word to care. And so leverage these platforms, get everybody up and say, let's talk just for a few minutes about what we did and how we're being you're doing to, to make ourselves healthier. Leverage where we are right now in these types of environments, our teams communicate more than we ever did because of what we have to do here on, on, a, on a Zoom meeting or a go to meeting. And so start talking about those things and, and put it in relation to having fun. Fun competition, talk about it and care for each other. Ask each other how they're doing with, with the wellness. The, their programs, the bumper stickers, the posters, those are good, but it's the changing in the culture that's going to help keep it longer. Remember, the, the, the derivative of the word culture is to care for and care for each other. Ask about how people are doing, it, open communication about fitness and taking care of each other. That will really have a longer term effect on changing the culture of your organization. Um, I did notice one of the things after we pushed this webinar out, one of the wardens, I think it was from the Polinsky unit, um, did, he put out, uh, if you participate in this webinar, bring your certificate of completion by and I'm going to take somebody out to lunch, uh, lunch with the warden. And I thought that was a really great idea to encourage people to participate and, you know, just to show his support uh, from the leadership perspective. So there's, there's lots, of, lots of great things happening happening um you know in all the agencies and and I, I appreciate learning about those things as well so we can share them with other agencies well i really appreciate it Lacey. thank you so much um and if i could be in any assistance with uh implementing a physical agility type assessment in your in your organizations or share additional thoughts or books or ideas please my contact information is in the handout as well Thank you so much. We really appreciate your, your words of inspiration and uh, look forward to having you on a webinar in the future. I thank everybody for your time and thank you, Lacey. I really appreciate it. Porter, thank you so much for allowing me to share some ideas. I really appreciate it. Honored, really honored. Thanks to both of you. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. you.